Hi there, Helen. Let's take a look at this new set of essays. The first one is uh, the average working time and economic success. So let's see what you wrote. Experts throughout both the developing and developed world have debated on the relationship between working hours and productivity. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Some believe that profit making, get rid of that S, is in positive relation with business hours. Personally, I strongly disagree. Uh, this essay will argue that nations with extended work time are not necessarily richer than other countries. Using the examples from the UK government and Oxford University, demonstrate points and prove arguments with an S. All right, so um, it's it's okay. There's um, certainly some good elements to this, but there are some things that we need to discuss. One of the things that I have found um, when students are writing this essay is that they, um, you see here it talks about the, uh, the country's economic success, okay, and not so much the profit of the company or the, um, you know, the income of the employee, it's the country's um, as a whole, so the government and, uh, you know, the, the, the uh what's the word i'm looking for the gross domestic product and so forth so all of these things are what we're really talking about and so since uh that's what we're talking about i was a little concerned with the first portion of this okay where you were talking about working hours and productivity and then profit and business hours um but we need to be focusing on the economic success of the country okay so you have to make that clear earlier on it wasn't really clear until that last sentence okay now um that's the first thing now let's talk about other things here um you said in positive relation the word you really wanted is a positive uh, correlation so let's talk about how you could have done that uh some believe that profit making is positively correlated with the number of business hours okay that would have been a more appropriate way of saying this um, now then what you had is this little sentence that didn't really have any sort of <coughs> link to it so what i would have preferred here is if you had combined these and here just put a however so look how it would have read some believe that profit making is positively correlated with the number of business hours. However, I strongly disagree. Okay, it reads much better. It's a longer, more advanced sentence. Okay, and it flows better and it keeps you from having this choppy little sentence. Okay, um, this was fine. And then uh, proof arguments with an S. Okay, so let's move on. We spent a lot of time in your introduction. So let's look at the body paragraphs. On the one hand, there is ample evidence that productivity uh, decline with labors are required to work intensively. All right, now here you've got me a little confused. I'm not entirely sure what this expression means. Productivity um, decline with labors are required to work intensively. I don't know what that means. I thought you were trying to say that productivity declines with decline being a verb. Um, but I didn't understand this with labors. So this whole thing is a little confusing to me. Uh, the central reason behind this is, <laughs> excuse me, is twofold. Firstly, workers are exhausted after working for a long time. Secondly, the quality of products would decrease. Okay. Uh, for example, recent empirical research by the UK government demonstrated that 90% of all employees reveal that their concentration starts to decrease after lunch. It must not be forgotten that although workers may be required to stay at the workplace, they are not capable of here, capable of doing something, capable of working constantly. Therefore, it is conclusively clear that productivity and work hours are negatively correlated. Okay, that's how you want to say that. All right, so let's look at this again a little bit. Um, I think I, I think I understand what you were trying to say here. I think you were trying to say, on the one hand, there is ample evidence that productivity declines when laborers are required to work intensively. 
Okay, and then the subtle reason behind this is twofold. Um, and then you explain to us why you say that they work a long time and then the quality decreases. And then you explained um, that uh, people's concentration starts to fall um, and they are not capable of working constantly. I don't really feel like this sentence really fit in. Um, I kind of wanted to see something about the quality starting to decrease. You never really explored that. You just kind of threw it out there. But any time you have some sort of an idea um, that supports what you're asserting, you really do need to support it with something. You need to back it up and explain to us why this is the case. So um, I would have preferred something else here about the productivity. Uh, you said that their concentration starts to decrease after lunch. Um, as a result, um, there is a decline in uh, the quality of products produced from, I don't know, let's say 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the evening as compared to products uh, created from 9 till 2 or, or something like that. So then that makes sense um, what you're saying here, okay? And it actually kind of combines both of those ideas. Uh, now, the bigger problem for me, though, here is that, remember, it's talking about the country. So, you have to um, link this back to the economic success of the country and not just productivity and that workers are not efficient. So, you want to say something like, um, therefore, c companies uh, exhibit large losses when they have people working many hours, and as a result... Um, you know, maybe these countries have a lower GDP or, you know, maybe they are not gaining as much tax money from these companies as, as they could um, in other circumstances. Something to link it back to the economic success of the country, okay? Maybe many businesses are failing um, in countries that have extended working hours because of this uh, lack of productivity, okay? But that's my point. I want you to link it back to the country. This is the problem that it seems to me that most students are having with this essay. They're not really talking about the economy of the country. So I want you to, um, to think about that. Um, okay, let's move on. On the other hand, although there is a case for China, Vietnam, and even South Africa benefiting from working, no, from long work time, the impact of prolonged working hours cannot be overstated. All right, now this doesn't really make sense to me. You didn't talk about um, the case of China or Vietnam and South Africa, so you're not really appropriately linking these two paragraphs. Now, what I understand is that when you're um, when you use an expression like this, what you're trying to do is pretty much summarize something you've said in the previous paragraph, and then uh, linking it by showing contrast to your new paragraph. But you didn't really do that here because you didn't talk about any of these countries um, in that previous paragraph. Okay, so um, I would have rephrased this uh, first sentence again. Let's see. So let's talk about something that would have made more sense. On the other hand, although there is a case for the loss of productivity with longer working times, um, the impact of the positive impact of prolonged working hours cannot be overstated. And then that makes sense. This is largely because despite limited office hours, industries and tertiary and quaternary sectors are usually more profitable. For instance, telecommunication, mass media production, pharmacy, financial service, and tourism. That's not a sentence. It's just, it's a fragment. There's no verb here, okay? So um, it would have made more sense if you had said industries in sectors such as telecommunications, mass production, uh, mass media production, pharmacy, financial service, and tourism are usually more profitable. That would have made sense, okay? Uh, let's see. Consistent with this line of thinking is that countries with greater business requiring higher skills are often more economically successful. Thus, it is possible to stay beyond doubt that working time does not correlate with economic success. Okay. Um, I 
thought I understood what you were talking about in this paragraph. It turns out that I didn't. I thought you were going to say that there, um, there are some positives to working many hours. That's not what I understood here. I understood that, in fact, you were saying something else. You were saying that uh, industries with short working hours um, are economically successful. I hope that's what you were trying to say because that's what I understood. But I didn't really feel like you developed this very solidly. Um, let me show you what I mean. So you said that despite limited office hours, you know, XYZ industries are more profitable, but you never really explained it. So how do you explain that they're more profitable? Why are they more profitable? And what does this mean about the success of the country? Okay, again, I'm going to talk about this. Um, and then this, I didn't understand. Countries with greater business requiring higher skill. What does that mean, greater business? I didn't understand that. Do you mean with more businesses requiring higher skill or often more economically successful? All right, well, back that up. I just didn't really feel like you were developing very much here. Okay. So let's continue. From the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that there is not absolutely linkage, and that doesn't make sense, that there is not linkage, get rid of absolutely, between long working hours and economic achievements. It is predicted that focusing ING on better time management and manpower allocation will increasingly grow in importance. Okay, um, so here's the thing with this essay, Helen. Um, you're using the template well, and that's wonderful. That's a great starting point. So well done there and using it um, appropriately. However, I did find um, a number of areas that were incoherent. I had a difficult time trying to understand what you were saying, trying to follow the flow of your ideas. So that's something that um, is definitely going to affect coherence and cohesion. Um, also, I think task achievement would probably be affected because it didn't really feel like it was on topic. Like you kind of skimmed the topic. You mentioned economic success and you mentioned countries' economic success, but I don't really feel like you necessarily were, were talking about this topic. Um, so there seemed to be some sort of difficulty in the development of this. So those are the areas that for me had some problems. Um, and now, as far as that incoherence goes, I'm curious is this, if this is because of grammar, because there are a couple of areas that, um, where was it, uh, down here somewhere, that I was just like, no, 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 the grammar here is incorrect. Um, so I'm wondering if some of this incoherence had to do with grammar, and if that's the case, then you'll feel it um, reflected in your, in your score for uh, grammar as well. Uh, but I think those other two areas were the main problems. All right, now we spent a ton of time on your task two, so I really want to go on to your task one, okay? So let's do that now. Okay, shoe sales is what we've got now, so let's see what you wrote. Okay, the above bar chart shows the purchase, the purchases, well, yeah, the sales. The, you could have just said sales, and that would have been fine. So the above bar chart shows the sales of brown and black leather shoes in nine European countries in 2018. Generally, more than a thousand pairs of leather shoes were sold in the above nations. Okay, uh, brown leather shoes were better sold in France, Germany, Ireland, Holland, as well as Poland. In contrary, no, in contrast, more customers in the UK, Belgium, Hungary, and Italy chose leather shoes in black. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you about this sentence here. Um, you mean this to be your overview, okay? However, there's inaccuracy here. Inaccuracy here. Do you see these zeros? That means that this is in thousands. So where you see 150, it's actually 150,000. Where you see 100, it's 100,000. So to say that more than a thousand pairs of shoes were sold is inaccurate, okay? And uh, if you're consistently inaccurate, that's going to lower your task achievement score. So that's the first thing. Um, I felt like this was getting into a little bit of detail. You didn't need to, um, to do all this. Um, you could have just said something like, uh, the most sold shoes were black leather shoes in Hungary, 
and the least were uh, brown leather shoes in Belgium. You could have done something like that. All right, that would have been a nice overview. Um, or you could have said something like, um, you could have said something like, uh, no clear pattern emerged. However, um, Hungary had the uh, highest sales of black leather shoes and Poland the highest of brown. You could have said something like that. All right, so let's move on. Uh, among all, the Poles bought the most brown leather, not footwears, footwear, singular. Okay. Um, all right, now it's a good idea to mention the number here. It's the highest brown in the chart, okay, the highest brown leather, so mention that number. Customers buying brown leather shoes were approximately 10 times more than those in Belgium. Now, that's useful, but if I don't know what the number sold or numbers purchased by the Poles were, then this comparison makes is 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 useless okay okay uh while in france the sales of brown leather shoes were because its sales were twice as much as the number of black leather shoes all right now you're going on to black although brown leather shoes were less preferred in other areas the difference among these two types were small now this is a little confusing i think the best way to do this is to have a paragraph about brown leather shoes exclusively and then have a paragraph about black leather shoes okay um it's a cleaner way of doing this because all of a sudden you started mentioning black when you hadn't really finished mentioning brown on the other hand despite the lowest sales rate of brown leather shoes among the belgians the leather shoes leather shoes and black sold best in hungary followed by italy black leather shoes purchased in hungary were roughly a quarter of the total amount sold in France. In addition, the amount sold in Germany and Ireland were the same. All right, now let's talk about what the problem with this is. There's no data. You're giving me comparisons and those comparisons are wonderful, but without having the numbers, this is not beneficial, okay? And it's going to lower your task achievement score. What you need to do is take a look at the band descriptors for task achievement in task one. I believe without data, it gives you a five in task achievement. So you really want to watch out for this. You absolutely need to have figures here. Once you finish with your overview, we'll talk about how to do that. Overall, regardless of the difference, difference CE in preference among citizens from the aforementioned countries, the total amount of black and brown leather shoes are more or less the same. Okay, uh, fine. Um, so, uh, I mentioned to you in the beginning that 150,000, 100,000, 50,000, this is a great way using these numbers along the side, because you've got a lot of information here. You've got 18 pieces of information and you really don't want to talk about all of them, but, um, you do need to talk about some of the important things here. So, um, the really important things here, of course, are this figure for Hungary, this figure for Poland. And of course, uh, France's uh, black leather shoes and Belgium's brown leather shoes, okay? Those are things you absolutely want to highlight, those highs, those lows, and then you can kind of smush the middle numbers in, the, in, in there altogether. Let's talk about how. This is how, personally, I would have written this. So I would have started personally with black leather shoes. Why? Because it's the highest figure on the chart. So for me, it makes sense to start there. So I would have started my detailed paragraph kind of like this. Um, in terms of black leather shoes, Hungary had the highest sales um, at, oh, what number is that? At 135,000. Uh, this was the uh, highest number of either brown or black uh, leather shoes uh, sold in any country. Um, Two other countries also sold above 100,000, see I'm using this here, namely Italy and uh, Belgium, okay? Then, the least black leather shoes were sold in France at approximately 30,000. Uh, the remaining countries, and you can name them, UK, Germany, Ireland, Holland, and Poland, all sold between 50 and 100,000 shoes, black leather shoes, sorry. So what have I really done here? I've highlighted this top number. I've told you that these two were certainly lower than 135, but they were above 100. So you've got a general idea about where they were. I've told you where France is. And then these um, five middle numbers, I just kind of smushed them together um, because you can more or less guess that they're somewhere between 50 and 100,000. I already said that. 
Okay, so that's one way of doing this. And then you can do something very similar in the next paragraph about brown leather shoes. All right, so that's an, an idea of how you could do this and how you can group together um, similar information. All right, by using ranges like this, saying that they were between 50 and 100,000 or saying that uh, this was below 50,000. You could have done that as well. All right, so that should give you some ideas about how to group and how to make sure that you're mentioning everything without mentioning too much, okay? But you did see that I had some data, I had some numbers, and that's really important. All right, Helen, go ahead, rewrite these and uh, correct them and send them back, and I'll be waiting for your next set. Good luck.